Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be episode 32 of my gameplay series in Sandy Bay 19. If this is what you're looking for, please stay tuned. Alright folks, welcome back. As you remember, we just mowed that over there. All our fields are ready to harvest. We're just waiting for them to dry up a little bit. Go ahead and turn grass on here. So... What we're going to do right now is probably mow this area here, get it good to go, and then we're going to go out here with the tether and get both of these guys tatted up so we can, well, actually we'll go mow that as well, might as well. So we get this mowed, this mowed, and then go out here with a tether and get it to start getting dry, um, and once it dries up a bit, then we should be good to go to get it um, turned into hay, hopefully, and then harvest it. Ooh, we're going to want to take that guy, and then we're going to start knocking out some of these contracts as we have quite a few now. So, 27... That's not quite big enough. Okay. So that's essentially what we got going on. I'm going to start getting this going. I'm probably going to get the case or the tractor working on some of those fertilizer contracts while I work on this. So essentially that's what we have going on here. Let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the weather actually. So again, we should be able to get hay down before Friday when it's supposed to rain next. Um, that could change through here. So we could at the very, but worst case scenario, we'll just pick up the grass and turn it into silage. But uh, yeah, so let's take a look at animals real quick. We have 44 cows now. We bought a lot of them last time. So they're going to need some definite work here soon. So they're going to need some more straw, some more TMR, uh, get cleaned up a little bit, a little bit more water. So we'll get those guys taken care of as well today. But uh, other than that, that's about all we have going on. So what I'm going to do is essentially kind of try to cook through this episode to get to harvest here soon or get to pelleting. Hopefully we can do some pelleting this episode. So um, yeah, I'm going to start getting some of this stuff going and then I'll bring you guys back in when something happens or just to give you updates as we go. All right, so before we take a look at what we got here in front of us, let's take a look here. So this contract is done, so we'll go ahead and, well, yeah, we'll accept that one. I say I like to accept a bunch of them at once. It makes me feel like I made a bunch of money, but uh, 20 is almost done. Um, actually, 20 is going to be done here like any second. Let's go fix up 20 here. Well, first off, I mowed this area, mowed this area, but this is alfalfa, so we should be able to mow that. I don't know. Does it go into the second state? It's so weird. I don't know how alfalfa works, so we're probably going to just mow that. Um, let's hop over to you, and you should be finishing up this bad boy here pretty quick, so. Oh, but you're going to round up fertilizer any minute, so I guess we can just kind of have you chill up here. You run through all sorts of fertilizer. Such a large field. Hopefully we can get the chance to harvest this field. I would really like to harvest the potatoes off of here and put them through, put the extras through our setup so we can make some extra cash that way, but, uh. We'll kind of see how it goes. There we go. Perfect. Okay, you can just hang out there. You're going to need more fertilizer. So, combine's still doing good. All right. So, this is alfalfa. We haven't done this before. So, I think we're going to go ahead and cut this up. And then we're going to have to windrow it again, just like the, the grass, I would assume. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Fantastic. I mean, it doesn't, it looks like grass. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything special. We actually could hire a worker to do this, technically speaking, but we'll just cut it. Look at that. We're doing alfalfa. Awesome. It's just something, something different. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it jumps up into, like, the darker growth states like grass does, since it's kind of like a grass, but kind of like a crop at the same time, kind of the way the game presents it. So I don't really have a good answer for that. Hopefully we're not just losing a bunch of cash here doing this. I don't think we're going to make very much money off of alfalfa anyways. But uh, what we're gonna do is probably cut it out here and then uh, we'll bring a tether over to tet it since it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna need to be tetted so we can dry it, get her all dried, and then we will be able to um, bale it up. So that's kind of the goal with the alfalfa at least. But uh, I know our cedar went rogue, so there's a little, little, some of these guys going on. But uh, we'll just ignore those and just drive over them, keep moving. <laughs> I actually probably come over and harvest them once we get uh, the alfalfa off the field, but yeah, so something different. I just wanted to, oh, geez. I just wanted to miss that section. But, um, yeah, I just want to bring you guys in to show you that we're going to cut some alfalfa. Um, the next thing I'm going to do after I get that guy reloaded with fertilizer is uh, get him going on those contracts up there. Um, we do have that sewing contract, so we'll get that one done as well here soon. Um, and I was thinking about pelleting. So, pelleting, we need a 350 horsepower tractor, which we, unfortunately, this is a 300. So, this is pretty big, but it's not quite big enough. So, really? Can it die? Interesting. Um, so this one's not quite big enough for us to pellet, which I thought it was 300. 
Oh, but it's actually 350, so I should have learned my lesson from No Man's Land. But uh, what we're probably going to do, if that's the case, is we'll either look into maybe trading out the case for a really big tractor. Or we'll look at just maybe just leasing a tractor for the time being. So a couple options. We do have some money in the bank, but I'd rather not just drain it all into a new tractor if I can avoid it. But uh, yeah, we'll just kind of play it by ear and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I just want to show you guys alfalfa. So I'll keep working and I'll bring you guys back in in a bit when something else happens. All right, so it has been quite a while. Well, maybe not like a while in the day, but it feels like a while. So um, our other fertilizing contracts were done, so we're sitting pretty good on cash. I think we're at 178-ish. But uh, so these two fields are fertilized, field seven. Um, so I tedded this and tedded this field. So these two fields are tedded. I have to go ted this one and field six as well. Um, tedding takes a lot longer and the edges do not like to ted. So I had to go over the edges multiple times. But uh, anyhow, it's done. It took me forever, I feel like. So now we have semi-wet grass out there. So it'll just kind of dry now, which would be awesome. But I'm going to see what this is worth to kind of look at what we might want to buy for other tractors. I don't know how much this guy's worth, but we'll see. Oh, he's worth more than I thought. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead. Holy cow, he's got a lot of hours on it, too. Um, oof. I think we get another tractor. 128, that put us at... Let's see what that put us at. Let me grab a calculator. 178 plus 128. Ah, just over 300,000. Well, we probably can get quite a tractor for that. So our tractor will need at least 350 in the horsepower range. I don't know what this goes up to. 352. Well, we want to go maybe above that. That's pretty... I mean, that's actually... We're going to be able to afford a nice tractor. I do like that. We could replace it with another case. Well, those guys are all sitting pretty good. We could get something else different. We haven't used... I haven't used a Steyr in a long time. Go ahead. Do it's far. We go the classic uh, farmer cop uh, Massey Ferguson decision there, but I want to get something different just to use something different. This one's 320 stock. What does it go up to? 435. That's not too bad. 324 is just outside of the price range, but we don't have to go all the way up on the engine. What's uh, that? It starts at 295. These are eight. So 295. 336 that doesn't go up very far so that one's that one's not going to be the one um how far does this one go up 313 that's not it either that's not going to be it either the case come on the case has got to go up higher than that 313 well it's not gonna be that guy so the john this john deere is a possibility technically speaking it's just, just over the 350 um those ones aren't going to work we know that one works the t8 would work the fat, ooh, the fat, that's a decent. How much is that one? It's not too bad for almost 400 horsepower. The Valtra S series, that starts out at 350 right off the bat. That would be nice. Get that up to 400. So it only goes to the 400, but we could get that one. The Valtra's on the list. I think we could also just get a massive John Deere. It's only got 290 though out of the store at least i mean you can get up to 450 but so that gets up to 450 this one can get up to 400 because i want it to kind of have a top out too so what if we did one step we need to go two steps to get good enough really to handle that so that's a bit outside of what we want to pay maybe at the time or right now but uh that one's uh, what's that one going to top out at 409 Two options. So, I mean, the engine bump's not really anything significant, but that's still not a bad tractor there. This vent, 517. That's not bad. Where are we at outside the gate? 396, so the 517. That's a pretty good jump. Ooh, that one might be the one. The vent, 1000. Now we're getting up into some big tractors here. We're not going to be able to afford these guys up in here. We don't need those, so... That would be a little bit outside the price range, but we could definitely work on getting it. The Valtra, what did this one go up to? 396, not as high as I'd want. What is this one? Again, this one's 400, okay. Yeah, I think we want to probably spring for this guy right here. So I think we're gonna try to get him, which means we are gonna have to take out a small loan, but we're gonna, we'll, we're gonna sell the case right now. Repair, yes, sell. Yes. Okay. 
So we're gonna sell the case right now, and then we're just gonna keep the John Deere and keep working with the John Deere. We're gonna wait until the hay dries, so probably not until tomorrow, that way we're not hit with any loan interest tonight. Um, yeah, that's kind of the idea. And actually, what do we have? Say we could sell some manure to get some extra cash. We don't have a lot of manure sitting there. I haven't done anything with the cows yet today. I do need to go do that. But uh, do we have any cows that we're going to be able to sell today? Pretty well, tomorrow we'll be able to sell some cows for sure. So, well, maybe those are Holsteins. The limousines, uh, maybe those two. <laughs> those two aren't quite there yet. But uh, all right, so that's kind of where we're sitting. Yeah, we have, I don't know where the wind drawer is at. Oh, actually, no, I know where it's at. It's up there. So we have the wind drawer, everything set up for doing the pellets, but uh, the Primos is going to have a bit of a leasing cost too, so we have to be aware of that. But I think that would be a good idea to get us a nice, nice, decent large tractor. So now the John Deere will be our small tractor. But as you can see, this took forever, and I still have two fields to go. Oh, losing it, but uh, it'll work out. I couldn't even get this stuff, some of it, but uh, yep. Here's John Deere out here, the workhorse. <laughs> I don't think the fields are going to be ready to harvest today. We'll check about noon today and see what's going on with them. But I'm going to keep Ted in. I'm going to go Ted our remaining two fields. So that's kind of where we're sitting. But uh, just want to give you guys an update. And I think, yeah, we are going to buy a new tractor at some point. Even if it's not this episode, we're going to do it at some point soon, hopefully. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I finished all my massive Tedding and all the fields are Tedded finally and painfully. Um, I sped the clock up a little bit just because I got a lot of that stuff done. I still need to do that sewing contract. We'll get that done here. I mean, we only have the John Deere, so the John Deere's the only that can do it. But I'm just getting the animals good to go. I just made another batch of TMR for them, and I brought in another straw bale as well. Um, we just used the last of the hay bales. We remember we bought hay bales um, earlier in the series to get our cows going just to start. I mean, we have, I mean, we have plenty of hay bales up in the barn. But uh, we, we used the last of our purchased hay bales, so we'll start tapping into our other a bale stash which i think we, we have i mean we have a boatload and a half of them so we'll see they might actually no they're not going to take this whole thing they'll take a lot of it but not all of it and they're not going to take a whole nother straw thing then we get them cleaned up we'll get them watered and then i just checked the crop moisture has gone down significantly but it's still not quite to point where we're going to be able to um harvest yet but no worries i have hope that we may be able to harvest today so hopefully if we can harvest today the straw will be out on the field and then hopefully tomorrow we can windrow early on, or maybe we're just gonna wait till tomorrow anyways to harvest. But I wanna get harvest done and then windrow all the straw and then use, since we have plenty of straw up in the barn, for at least another year, I'm sure. Um, what we're gonna do is hopefully um, get, when we get the pelletizer to make the straw, straw into pellets as well, which would be, ooh, don't tip that over, which would be fantastic. It'd be a great source of money for us. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for. Um, that should pay off our loan and still give us a significant amount of cash on top. So let's set you right there. All right. But yeah, so that's what I'm hoping for. Hoping for a good good amount of pellets because we made a lot of money in uh, no man's land doing pellets. So I'm hoping we can do the same thing here, which I mean, I'm, I'm sure we can. Pellet prices are the, essentially the same, I believe. We go over. Yeah, pellet prices are basically the same. Those are actually a little bit higher than what we were getting for No Man's Land. It looks like they might be higher than what we are getting for No Man's. But uh, here is the... Yes, so that's not worth a lot of money, but uh, I guess it is what it is. Okay, let's get this guy, these guys some straw. Switch over to that. Yeah, they may end up taking most of this bale. I mean, yeah, there'll still be some left of it, but not a lot. And then uh, we'll have to hop over and get them some water, which is obviously really easy with what our setup is. So that won't be too bad. I'll probably wait until a little later this evening, maybe to clean them up just because they're doing okay right now. All right, and I will dump that off. Actually, I might as well just... There, I'll leave that guy there. Might as well sit there for now. Actually, I might as well. Oh, I'm gonna have to use them again later, huh? Clean up the cows. Probably just actually, yeah, we'll just leave all that stuff set up there. Should go get him some water though, right now. But uh, yeah, after that, I'll go get that sewing contract done, and that's kind of all we're going to get done today. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we can jump into um, getting some of the harvest going, even if we're not pelleting maybe tomorrow, but at least get some of the harvest going and then pellet the next episode, hopefully. I know I said I wanted to like wrap this up faster, but then I, I mean, we just get so busy with uh, harvest season in the Sandy Bay here, so. It just is what it is, I suppose. But uh, what was I going to go do? Oh, yeah, I was going to do that sewing contract. Um, let's go pick up our cedar. 
I don't know what I'm planting, but I'm sure it can't be anything too complicated. Hopefully, actually, I probably should just look real quick to make sure. Um, sowing barley. Okay, good. We can do that in field 15, which is oh, way up there. Okay, no big deal. Not too bad. So I will get that contract done. But essentially, that's kind of where we're sitting. I probably won't bring you guys back in until tomorrow in game. But uh, yeah, and then hopefully tomorrow we can go ahead and windrow all of our hay and yeah just have that set up and we'll probably go up and bail the alfalfa tomorrow yeah we'll probably do that so i mean we'll just kind of play it by ear but that's that's the goal as of now at least so i will see you guys in a little bit all right folks welcome back so i actually decided to buy me a little harvesting today because the canola is not going to drop a straw swath so i figured that can get knocked out today no problem so we'll go ahead and get that going it dry the crop moisture dried really quickly i think it was like 32 percent at the start of the day and now it's down to um shoot down to 19 percent. so it went fast you can see my massive field of soon to be hay <laughs> yeah i should get a pretty good yield off of this so that'll be nice yeah we're gonna be sitting pretty good financially at the end of this year plus we're gonna have cows making milk for us next year so that'll be fantastic um yeah other than that i don't know I don't know what else we got going on for our farm, but uh, cows are doing good. If we get some a good pellet harvest, I'm hoping if we can get, you now this might be just a dream, but if we can get like 150 to 200,000 from the pellets and then another 150,000 from the harvest, I mean, we're looking between three to $400,000, which would be great. And that would, and we, we wouldn't need to buy a tractor or anything. So we got good tractor. We're probably not going to buy a combine because we honestly have a really good combine too. So we'll kind of have to try to brainstorm what we're going to buy. It might just be more land. Um, that won't be enough to buy the massive field. I really want that field down there. Field, what is it? This field, 24. <laughs> it's like the dream field, just so large. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I don't know. We might we might make some upgrades to some stuff around here. Maybe get some better stuff for the animals. I don't know. We'll kind of, we'll kind of figure it out. We get a bigger uh, feed mixer. We could get that huge straw blower that holds eight straw bales. That actually would be a pretty good investment for us. So that might be a piece of equipment we look into. But yeah, just kind of get some upgrades around the farm. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing grass on those. I don't know. It just is a lot to do grass on there a couple times a year. We make good money off of it, but I might just do crops. And the alfalfa, probably the only time I'm going to do alfalfa. Because looking at price and stuff, we're probably not going to make a ton off of it as it is. So it probably, I mean, it's like kind of like a slightly more expensive version of grass if you want to look at it that way so but then again too when we get into this uh with the update on here there might be some equipment we'll need to to do some different stuff with uh onions and some of the other crops that they're going to have on here so i can't remember all the new crops they're going to have on here but they're definitely have a few so i'm very excited with the update what's coming with it so well i definitely need to purchase one of those uh hedge cutters so we can get rid of the stupid hedges but uh yeah, so there's a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff on the update that I'm excited to try out and use. But uh, the only disadvantage of harvesting right now with only one tractor is our other tractor is up planting. So we'd have to wait until it gets back before we can unload the combine since I'm not going to want to drive the combine all the way up to the silo. That is for sure. But uh, yeah, we're going to get, I mean, yeah, we're already 50, almost 50% 50 full and we're not even, we're maybe halfway, we're probably halfway around uh, this the outside of this field so we're gonna get a really good yield off of this field a really really good harvest and then those two down there are rye and then what is it canola two more fields of canola up there i think that one's no i think it's rye 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 on that one and then the top one's canola so only one more field of canola because we changed that one of the canola fields or one of the soon-to-be canola fields for alfalfa so yeah so we don't have a whole lot of canola to do so after we get this field done this is kind of the big one and then we'll move up and hit the the one up top there so yeah not too bad i'm gonna probably try to do a couple rows around the outside and then do the bottom part and uh stuff like that and then i'll probably try to hire a worker to get the stuff up top here done while i'm carting the canola away with the john deere but uh, and i can't even remember i know we just looked at what tractor to buy i'm gonna have to look what tractor we wanted to buy i'm gonna have to look in the uh when i'm, when I'm editing because i can't even remember it now <laughs> Oh, that's my uh, short-term memory for you, but, uh, yep, it is what it is, I suppose. Oh, boy. I'm trying to think of a good police story for you guys, so 
Um, one thing I'll, I'll just, here's something I can talk about a little bit that's kind of a unique thing. Um, so this is not necessarily a story of something that's happened to me, but um, a thing, so in the United States, I know some people that watch aren't in the US um, or don't live in the US. I think my for my channel, what YouTube tells me is that only half the people that watch are in the U.S. So, uh, people outside the U.S. It's an interesting concept. Concept, and some of you that are in the U.S. too, this might be something that you're either aware of or you didn't really think about that way. But uh, so, being a police officer on duty, I have a gun on me, right? I carry a firearm. That's what I'm required to do. And then I have a rifle in my car, so I'm I'm well armed when I'm on duty. I have all that. But a lot of people don't think about like what do you, what do you carry off duty? Because I work in a relatively small town i mean it's a decent sized town but it's it's small enough um where there's definitely a good chance that i could run into someone that i arrested off duty like maybe when i'm with the store or at the store with my family or whatever the case may be so you know and so some of the people i arrest obviously weren't too friendly to me and some of the people that i arrest were more violent towards me because i have been assaulted several times while on duty um so those are the ones that I would be more concerned about recognizing me. Now, what I've noticed in general, too, is I have seen people off duty that I have dealt with before. A lot of times, once you're not in uniform, they just, for whatever reason, they don't recognize you, which is great. I mean, you recognize them, but they don't recognize you. So that's fantastic. But uh, I have had um, a couple of occasions where I ran into people I've arrested that they did recognize me. And I could tell immediately because their demeanor changed. Thankfully, they were peaceful arrests, I would say, where they were pretty, pretty chill with me when I had arrested them. But... Uh, no, you can definitely tell they recognize me immediately. So I have, um, so anyhow, that's all kind of coming back to like the safety aspect of like, what, how do I defend myself off duty since I don't have a firearm? Cause you know, you could get a firearm if you wanted to, um, in the United States, if you wanted to carry a firearm, you know, as long as you're not a felon or whatever. And even if you are a felon, you can still probably get access to an illegal firearm. I mean, it's possible. It's something that happens. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a concern. I want to be able to defend myself and my family off duty, or, or also too, if something happens and I'm off duty, a uh, violent crime occurs, I want to be able to defend um, the community I live in. So um, it's kind of important to be able to have access to firearms and stuff like that. We'll go check on the John Deere up here. Yeah, he's doing. Um, but yeah, so that, this is one of those things that I have to kind of think about to make sure I, I'm prepared for. So I do carry a gun everywhere I go. I have my badge on my hip and my gun on my hip everywhere I go. Now I don't have it exposed, so you can't tell I'm armed. I keep it concealed because it's just, in general, it's safer. I don't have any issues with people that open carry. It's just, in my personal opinion, I just think it's better to conceal carry because then no one knows who has a gun um, versus if a violent crime is going to occur and they the the offender sees who has a gun, that's the person they're going to focus on first, taking out or dealing with. But if they don't know who, if anyone has a gun or who might have a gun or whatever the case may be, then, um, yeah, just keeping it concealed is great because then i can i can get it out if i need it um which is fantastic and i have my badge with me at all times just to make sure that um in case i do need to pull my gun out or i need to identify myself as a police officer i have the ability to do that i have a visual aid to show hey look i am a police officer so um it just works works out that way because obviously if i'm if someone just pulls out a gun they're like i'm a police officer it's like well how, how do you know they're a police officer right it's like they could be a bad guy just the same and again two people can make fake badges and all this different stuff but it's it's better than nothing i don't know what else to say you know it's just it's kind of like a you know it's the best of the worst so but uh anyhow so yeah that's something a lot of people don't think about i do carry my gun with me off duty um essentially wherever i go i rarely I sometimes will go if I'm just running a quick errand, I'll go, I won't grab my gun, but that's only if it's just me going because I'm not worried too much about me as much. But if uh, I'm doing going anywhere with my wife, I try to make sure I have my gun on me. Um, I didn't have it on me when I went when we went on our honeymoon uh, just because traveling with a gun is a little bit more complicated. But yeah, at the same time, you know, I just was still just head on a swivel, make sure I'm always, you know, have 360 degree awareness to make sure I'm paying attention to what's going on around me. And that's kind of just how best case to stay safe and stuff like that. So. Well, anyhow, guys, um, as far as the farming aspect of things go, we're going to try to get the, hopefully this field and this field up here, because those should be our two canola fields, right? Over here, canola. Yeah, those are our two canola fields, because oh, we got so much rye, which is actually fantastic, um, because we're going to need that. That's so much straw that we're going to be able to pelletize. We may even bail. I mean, we have a lot of straw bales, so we may even bail maybe just like I'm thinking just a small amount. Like, how much does our... How much does our bale collector hold? Holds 14. So maybe we'll just bale 14, do one load and throw it in the other barn just so we have a backup, you know, supply of straw that we can use. Um, 
But yeah, I'll take the one drawer out tomorrow. What else we got in here? We got a lot of different stuff. <laughs> um, those things are great. This thing is kind of a, I almost wish we didn't buy it just because it was, it doesn't seem to work right, but eh, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, milling machine. Anything we don't need in here or anything we don't really use. That guy we really don't use too much, but again, it's not that expensive and we're not gonna get a lot if we sell it, so we'll just kind of hold on to it. We may upgrade to a bigger sprayer or a bigger fertilizer system at some point. And actually, I'm thinking we're gonna sell this because we don't, we don't need it anymore for silage. So actually, I do think we are gonna sell that. There's just no sense in us holding on to it. I'll hold on to probably a lot of the other stuff we have just, just because. Uh, we may get bigger trailers and such later on, but for now, I'm pretty happy with what we got going on, so. Yeah, but I think I am going to sell that. So that's probably the next thing I'm going to do once I head back to the farm is probably sell that guy. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a little bit. I should be wrapping up this episode pretty soon, probably. So yeah, I'll see you guys and we probably wrap it up in the next uh, segment. All right, I got our first almost full load. I mean, when the combine's full again, it's not going to be able to fit in here. So I figured we might as well take this up to the silo. But 34,000 liters so far isn't too bad. I mean, if we look in at the map here, zoom in here, we still have quite a bit left. Yeah, so I mean, we still got probably a third of the field left, maybe a little bit more than that. So yeah, that's not too bad at all. And then we'll go up here and hit this field. And that's probably where we'll wrap up today in game or something whole else we have left to do. And then tomorrow, hopefully, um, let's see if weather's still looking our way. By the way, it's looking at canola. We're gonna wait, hold on to it until about there to sell. Um, weather, weather's still looking in our favor, drying, drying. Thursday, cloudy, cloudy. Rains on Friday, okay. Yeah, weather's still in our favor. Um, also, too, since we I sold the uh, I sold the sugarcane trailer, so since doing that, um, selling that trailer that we didn't need, we now have enough probably to buy that tractor without any problem. So we shouldn't have to take out a loan, which would be fantastic. Uh, I mean, we might have to take out a loan to lease the uh, Primos still, but I'm not too worried about that. We'll be able to get that back pretty quick selling pellets. Um, hopefully pellet prices are good because we don't really have anywhere to store pellets, which actually let's take a look at pellets real quick um, it Should be in here. Yeah, hay pellets They kind of vary So we should actually tomorrow if we're doing hay pellets tomorrow. That'll be perfect to sell them Straw pellets also tomorrow perfect to sell them. Those ones just just jump back and forth There's not really a whole lot of variation there. So that's pretty nice as far as that goes at least but uh, yeah Get this canola stored up and then actually how are the cows doing i forgot to check them cows are doing okay yeah they're doing fine they need, need to be cleaned up a little bit uh at some point today but otherwise they're doing really good oh i was like what is that on the ground what is the plane shadow <laughs> yeah so hopefully next episode we are going to start pelleting and we will have a new tractor as well which would be fantastic to have a um, two tractors over 300 horse is really awesome since this one's at 300 horse and then if we have another one we'll have that one is hopefully to be closer to the 400 mark when we buy it so that'll just be kind of what we need to run the Primos successfully um, and no man's land kind of what I figured out is the Primos kind of needed about 400 horsepower to run pretty effectively um, the more horsepower the better obviously so yeah 400 was good 300 was definitely not enough 350 is barely enough um that's like i mean that's the minimum horsepower requirement really is the minimum it's not really enough to to run it like you might want to so yeah <laughs> oh boy but yeah the, i'm not sure if the uh so when i tetted the alfalfa it looks completely different than this so i'm not sure if that's actually just dried out or not or what the case may be but yeah not sure so no idea i guess we'll find out tomorrow uh, if it changes up or not is it Full again? No, he's just turning around. Okay, I was about to say, if he was full again, I'd be very shocked. Um, yeah, slowly getting this knocked out, I, and I knocked around the edges, so he'll keep hitting up there. I'll probably finish off the last chunk just because he'll do that pretty inefficiently. And then I obviously hit this bottom section here. So, yep, that's a lot of rye on those three fields. That's that's going to be literally... I mean, if we're getting this much canola off of this field, I can't imagine what we're going to get as far as rye goes, which we still can't store rye as of right now. Um, at least I'm pretty sure we can't. We shouldn't be able to yet. Yes, we cannot. But in the update for Sandy Bay, we can store rye. So that'll be nice to have that available to us. Yeah, 1500 bucks. We didn't get that for uh, straw pellets or hay pellets in No Man's Land. So that's, that's a good price there. But uh, 
Yep, so as far as things go, I will keep harvesting and uh, keep getting this going on, but that's about all. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update on what's going on and that we got our first load. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so we finished up field one and we got another 25,000 liters. So 34 and 25, so we probably got close to 50,000 liters of uh, canola out of there, which is great. That's going to get us... Shoot, that's going to get us like 60, 70,000 just off of this one field. So that is awesome. Um, we'll go ahead and try to get the combine up to their field. I'm not sure how this is going to work since the last time I just kind of harvested my way up there. So, yeah, we're going to try to take the road and see how poorly this goes. Because if you drive up there, I don't want, we might be able to fit without getting the tires. I mean, yeah, it's going to overlap a little bit into, I don't know, that's a double gate. Oh, yep, there we go. We made it. <laughs> As long as you don't touch the uh, rye, it should be fine. Because uh, we don't want to destroy any of our crops. But uh, it's going to be tight up here. Ooh. Yep, you just got to make it work. <laughs> Perfect. Just like that. Well, actually, eh, it doesn't really matter where we go. Let's try this. So, yeah, so here's the alfalfa. So that's the kind of, like, really just kind of a bright, alarming lime color, really. Um... I guess there's some dead alfalfa, but anyhow. So I'm not sure if that's actually dry, good to go or not. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it means. First time ever doing alfalfa, so could not even begin to tell you what that meant. Um, let's go ahead and grab this. I'll get a little closer first. I'll go ahead and grab this section here before we start the next one. Fantastic. All right, I think what we're going to do, since we're starting to get close to the end of this episode, I think we're going to finish up this canola field, and I'm going to get that going, probably get a worker to work on that. Um, and then once we're done with this canola field here, um, I think that's where we'll probably wrap up the episode. So I'll see you guys after we're done with this field. All right, and we have finished harvesting this. We got 20,107 liters, so let's get this down into our silo, and then we will see how much we have, and then we'll wrap up the episode, and I think that'll be a good place for us to stop there. So, and again, next episode, we're going to be doing a lot. We hopefully we do pelleting next episode, but we need to get rye going as well. Um, yeah, so rye, get alfalfa baled, all sorts of stuff, and also we need to focus on not getting a speeding ticket here. Perfect. <laughs> Stressful. I can't. Lots of those speeding tickets on this map. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anyhow. Oh, man. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Anyhow, if there's anything you want to see in future episodes, please, of course, comment down below. Uh, I'm not sure how long this series will go. I'm sure we'll go at least another year. Um, yeah, we'll kind of see. I don't, I don't know exactly how it's going to go, where it's going to go, what we're going to do in the next episodes and whatnot. Um, this isn't the most popular series, which is okay. I don't i'm not like oh you guys need to watch it more or anything like that it just it just is what it is i understand that not every series i do everyone's gonna like that's on the channel or anything like that so um i don't, I don't have any issues with that but i, I have a few series that i want to get started that i'm really excited about um i'm thinking of running and i mentioned this on no man's land that already came out by the time you guys will see this i mentioned doing three series at once but one of them is only gonna have an episode a week and then one's gonna have three a week and one's gonna have two weeks so essentially the same amount of episodes um, just a couple series or maybe i just dial it in and do um no man's land five days a week and then do the second series i don't know i got a lot of different stuff maybe we'll do that for a week or so and see how that goes um or maybe i'll just do two series and have a couple days off every week just for um i don't know just to make it easier for me for a little bit and just do that for a bit i don't know kind of depends um as you know my work schedule is kind of fluid and kind of changes around so we'll see how it works out when we get off of 12 hour shifts and anything like that right now on 12s i have long weekends and i seem to be able to maintain it fairly well um i feel like like even though if i go on a day shift i'll be able to record a little less just because i'll be home and my wife will be up and things will be happening but anyhow guys if you enjoyed this oh, we gotta look and see what we got <laughs> the whole point of coming back up here um canola it's gonna be over here Canola, we got 79,592 liters off of our canola harvest, so almost 80,000 liters. Um, if we go into what we're going to be selling it for, which is going to be more, well, I guess it's right here, huh? Um, 1,100, we're going to be getting probably 1,300. I mean, if we go into the seasons menu and go look at it, where is canola? Canola. So that's where we're at here. So that's 1,300 liters. So that's almost up to the 1,300 liter point. So if we're talking... 
80,000 liters approximately. So if we're able to sell it for $1,300 per 1,000 liters, um, we're looking at just over 100,000, 104,000 ish or 100,000 ish off of that harvest. So that's going to be a decent chunk of change for us, which is fantastic. So um, definitely money we needed. <laughs> Uh, we're doing, I mean, this, the financial state of this farm is fantastic. It's doing well. We have lots of cows, which are all worth a lot of money. If we needed to sell them for whatever reason, um, we can take out a loan if we need to. We have plenty of bales, plenty of stuff going on. Uh, we have plenty of, uh, honestly, we have plenty of land really, which we got really lucky with this map because we owned a lot starting out. So we're able to sell some of the other farms we weren't going to use and kind of, uh, get the fields we wanted. But, uh, I think I'm not going to do horses yet. I do want to do horses. Um, but we need oats first off. So I think we'll plant some oats to get started, get ready to do that in the next year. But I think we'll do that once we get the map updated, which what's out there. Oh, it's the combine. Of course it's out there. Um, I'll leave it probably just out there for now. So we have three fields to harvest in the next episode and uh, stuff like that. And actually cows. Yeah, I need to make sure I take care of them, but they're, they're I mean, they're doing okay right now. But uh, anyhow, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please drop a like down below. Um, if you have not already, please hit that subscribe button up on your screen to join the channel. And yeah, turn on your notification bell so you stay tuned for future videos that I may post. But uh, anyhow, guys, I appreciate you coming and watching. Thank you.